My name is Ronald Horst. Uh, I'm working at uh, Aegon. Aegon is a company. Uh, first, let me tell me uh, tell you a bit about myself. I've been working in IT for about uh, 30 years already. Um, at Aegon uh, for 10 years and working with uh, Puppet itself for almost five years. And some of my hobbies are photography and uh, making long travels and having long vacations. So that's a bit of my background. Uh, I'm working at Aegon, which is a financial company, uh, insurance, banking, uh, so that's the, the whole company. Uh, a part of the Aegon company is called Aegon Global Technologies, which is a, a department that's uh, focusing on the infrastructure and delivering all uh, kind of options for the business units itself. So we create, uh, as a part of our day-to-day -day operations, we create and maintain our infrastructures for the customers, and we support both US and the uh, European uh, 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 the European uh, business units for their uh, infrastructure. We also support the applications that they are running and if there are any ad hoc activities we also need to step in. Uh, next to that we also try to introduce lots of uh, new technology uh, which is uh, at the moment moving towards cloud and trying to see how we can uh, use the infrastructure and automate the infrastructure over there as well. So our life before Puppet. Uh, before we started using uh, all kind of automation, uh, we faced a couple of challenges. And that meant that uh, we noticed that we didn't have all the uh, consistency in, in the infrastructure that we had. So when we ordered a couple of servers to build out some environment or application, we noticed that not all the servers were configured in the same way. So that meant that we had to spend time in getting the machines, the servers in a correct state before we could actually deploy our applications towards that servers. And why did we have these kind of challenges? Well, um, most important reason is that in the old days, a lot of things were done manually. And every manual change means that a person is doing it and another person could do it in a different way so we end up with these kind of differences. Sometimes uh, even scripts are used, uh, which is really great, but a script is working perfectly for a particular operating system. If you move to a next one or have a different kind of setup, you need to modify the scripts as well. And who is maintaining the scripts? Could be in different locations, and that gave a lot of uh, issues that we were facing. So the consequences of this was that we are actually seeing a drift in our configuration of all the servers. And in order to get it back meant that we had to do the same kind of things over and over again, which wasn't really productive. So then we thought, well, we need to automate, but why do we need to automate? Well, um, first of all, to try and eliminate all our human mistakes. We make mistakes, so that's not an issue, but we try to find a solution where we can eliminate these. And we want to reduce the time for our solutions to become available for the customer. Could be external customers, could be the internal business units that we are working for. And we try to implement the dry principle, that's what we call it, and that's called don't repeat yourself. So let's do it only once and use that uh, same piece of uh, information and piece of code for all the time uh, that we want to do it. Why can't we just use scripts? Well, I already mentioned a couple of them. Um, scripts are uh, kind of giving us a scalability issue. Uh, we are not able to uh, roll out the same scripts on different environments. Uh, moving towards clouds, you have different computers over there, so you have to change your scripts again. But that means manual actions again, and we want to avoid these manual actions. So it's also very difficult to um, uh, have a single location for all the scripts. People are trying to do the best and they create scripts for uh, lots of services, but they are located in a single or in a particular location of that person and maybe not in a single location. So we needed to have a single source for our source code as well. That meant that it would become uh, visible on what we are doing. If we are running scripts from multiple locations, that visibility is gone. And uh, another big issue is that if you run scripts to make changes to your infrastructure, you need elevated access. And 
getting elevated access is a bit of a problem in an enterprise organization. You have to go through all the ticketing uh, systems and all the approval processes to get the access. So that uh, takes away all the speed that you want to have. So we decided we need something like infrastructure as code. And why do we need it? We want to well, we wanted to have a consistent infrastructure. Uh, every time that we deliver a server for our customer, internal customer, it needs to be the same configuration applied. It needs to behave in the same way. And we can only do that if we write, write our infrastructure as code. Um, therefore, if it is written in code, we can uh, also uh, scale very quickly. So the high scalability is very important for us as well. And therefore, also, because it is consistent, we can deliver a higher quality of our software. And now, because everything is in one location and everything is written in code, we have a better control and visibility on what actually is going on in our infrastructure. So why use Puppet Enterprise? Well, we've chosen Puppet Enterprise uh, because of the layer of abstraction. We needed to have some kind of tooling where we could focus on what to do and not the, uh, the way on how to do it. It's really no, uh, nice how you can log into a machine and run all kinds of commands by yourself, but you have to have the knowledge about that particular operating system. So we wanted to take that away and use a layer of abstraction so we can now focus on exactly w uh, what we want to achieve and not the identical co or the exact commands on how to do that. Another thing is that because we use Puppet, Puppet Enterprise for this, for our configuration management, that there was no need for us anymore to actually log in on all the machines and no need for any elevated access uh, anymore, which is really great for all kind of compliance uh, checks that we have. And everything is now centrally managed on our Puppet Enterprise master. And that gives us a single location where we can actually look at the environment, see how it's behaving, and see all kind of changes appearing, but use that for auditing purposes as well. So how did we implement that layer of abstraction? Well, we first uh, had a question on to build some piece of code, and we wanted to use the modules readily available. So we had a look at a different set of modules, which we took and downloaded from the Forge, like the uh, LAMP stack, managing the LAMP stack itself, doing some continuous integration software like CICD used uh, for the applications uh, of Atlassian Suite, and we needed to do some hardening on all the machines uh, as well. So we created the profiles for this, which is the implementation layer that we do, and this is where we look at the technical implementation. So there's a profile created for managing our CI uh, infrastructure, there's a profile where we manage the hardening of all the servers and then some profiles for doing the application part as well. So we have uh, the LAMP profile for managing the LAMP stack, but also a profile for managing Drupal, which is the content management system that we use for our Egon.nl website, for example. So on top of that, we created our roles. And this is like the business layer. So we decided we want to create a role for each kind of server that we have. And the roles include just a couple of uh, our uh, profiles, and this can be done by the DevOps teams themselves. Uh, all kind of profiles and roles, uh, roles are available. If a business uh, unit or a development team wants to create a new role for a machine, they can go ahead and pick one uh, from all the profiles that are available. If they aren't available, they are allowed to build their own profiles and. Uh, have them uh, send in for approval and they can be used. And each server is connected to a single role. There's always a one-on-one -on -one connection between the role of a server and the role attached to it. Some people say, well, we have an exception here. We have a server that actually has multiple roles, for example, two roles. Then we say, we create a new role that combines all the profiles into a single set. And now our first statement is true again. We have a single role for a single node. And for example, we have a couple of servers which we call SWF, our software factory, and another set of servers that could be used for Aegon.nl website. And we just attach a role to that particular instance, and everything will be installed, configured, and 
available for the customer within a couple of minutes, half an hour max. So the first project that we had was actually to deliver a new website for the Aegon.nl uh, customer. They wanted to move away from the old environment and be more flexible, so they wanted to have a better digital user experience. That's where the name Ducks comes from. And we were asked to build this. And we said, well, okay, we can do that, but now instead of all having all the traditional ways of building and requesting servers, we want to manage it full stack. So that meant we want to manage the operating system, we want to manage the database, we want to manage the content management application, in this case, Drupal. And the team that I'm working in is responsible for the technical implementation. So we make sure that everything is available, the servers are up and running, the Drupal content management system is available for the customer to use. We do not take uh, care of the content. They are, of course, backed up, but we are not. We are technical people, so don't let us build any website. It won't show up. <laughs> so content management is done by the content management teams, but they leverage the uh, application and the setup that we delivered. And the great thing is that now everything is managed in a central location. So we can actually uh, see what we have and know what configuration changes uh, are applied because of our single source of truth. And we also try to then separate our configuration data from the configuration code. So we abstracted the data into Hira and that's also available for customer to make changes in if uh, required, and they don't have to actually modify the code itself. They can just update the higher data. One good of some example where we use this part for is when we have a, a security, vulner, security vulnerability uh, issue on the Drupal core. There is a statement at Aegon that we need to have uh, a particular level of risk of the security incident it needs to be in production within four or eight hours, which was kind of impossible for us to do in the old days. Now, because we have uh, sc uh, not scripted, but used the configuration management to do this, also have the teams available to manage the uh, HIRA data, it becomes really easy. The only thing, only thing for us or for the team to do is actually update uh, the configuration data for this. So we have some part where we store the configuration of which version to be installed. Uh, in the example, it's a particular version. If a new version has come out, we just update the configuration data for our development environment, make sure that the code is committed, it will be picked up by the Puppet Master, and within a couple of minutes, uh, that particular new version is deployed and can be tested. Getting the, the same version into production, we always need to follow the same process. We go, we start at development, continue to our test environment, acceptance environment, and uh, the last part is production. And we are actually now able to deploy the new version within a couple of hours uh, using uh, this way of working, which is kind of uh, unheard of before. We weren't able to do that. So you kind of get a uh, website like this when you uh, have your uh, application deployed and up and running. Again, the content is not something that we do, that's the content manager, but the whole infrastructure and making it possible to display, to display this kind of content, that's all done by Puppet. <coughs> so they were really happy and they asked us to extend the scope. We were asked to uh, have a look at some of our deployment tools, automation tools, CI/CD tools, and we use the Atlassian stack for this. But in order to be quick and do more, we had to have a unified way of working. So we had a code development flow uh, build up and uh, implemented where our DevOps teams can actually uh, write code, change code, change higher data if required. Everything is stored in a Git repository and there are approval uh, steps required in order to get it into our master or production branches. Once everything is tested using uh, our CI tooling, in this case Bamboo, then the code becomes available on our Puppet master, and that means that it's actually taking over that piece of code and deploying it on our Windows Linux uh, servers, both on-prem and AWS as well. 
So having this uh, workflow in place, we were actually able to install and configure the whole Atlassian suite as well. And that was the, the task that we were uh, asked to do. So we uh, have a newer Puppet Enterprise Master uh, installed with the latest version at that time. We implemented the uh, roles and profiles uh, in a more strict way and we automated the whole installation of that Atlassian suite. So installation and configuration. So actually that meant that all the tools that, we, that the Aegon.nl business unit uh, required, Jira, Confluence, Bamboo, uh, Bitbucket and Crowd, and some other tooling as well, like uh, the Sonar and JFrog art factory for storing all the artifacts, are now completely installed, configured and maintained by Puppet. But then, hey, we got noticed and people started to knock on our door. Uh, they figured out that we were able to do this and we got a lot of requests coming in. Can you help us? We also want to have some part of our continuous integration or tooling installed, but uh, we want to have it quick. That meant that going on-prem is kind of difficult. We, and the statement of Aegon was, we tried to do cloud first so we said we need to have a workflow that delivers us or enables us to deliver in cloud as well. And we kind of follow the identical workflow for this. So we have a developer, a DevOps engineer that is writing the code to create the infrastructure in AWS. It is stored in our Git repositories. Uh, approvals are required to uh, have it merged into our production branches and that Code is being checked and validated, and it's being used to create the whole infrastructure in AWS. So that meant that now our software factory is becoming available for a lot of different companies or business units of Aegon. Uh, so Aegon UK uh, requested to have some tooling in place as well, and we uh, delivered them Jira and Confluence. Then uh, Aegon Global also said, well, that's really great that Jira tool and the Confluence wiki, so we also want to uh, leverage this tooling. Can you deliver a subset or the identical setup, but in a different account? Well, no problem, we build it. And then uh, again, Aegon Asset Management also uh, saw the benefits of all these kind of tooling, and they also requested to have the same Jira and Confluence in place. And it's not very difficult for us anymore. We still need to follow our kind of uh, approval process, but when a company or uh, business unit requests and decides we want to have an application or application suite in place, when the approvals are given, within one hour, we build the whole infrastructure. Running these uh, kind of applications in multiple accounts um, for multiple business units and multiple purposes uh, demanded some insight in the application. We knew, of course, on uh, our Puppet Enterprise Master if the machines were in the desired state, but the business units themselves also wanted to have more insight. How is my machine behaving? What's happening over there? Can we aggregate the log files to a single location? So that meant that we had to install a couple of agents. Doing that on a single machine is not too complicated. If you want to do or need to do that on a couple of hundred servers, then it takes a lot of time. So we have uh, created some Puppet code where we actually install and configure the Logscape agent for log aggregation, uh, Urban code for doing our uh, deployment of the applications, and App Dynamics for all monitoring and uh, and testing and log analytics as well. And these are all installed uh, using our Puppet modules for that, that we created. So we were kind of successful and uh, as mentioned this morning, uh, we kind of become victim of our own success. But now, because lots of teams now asked us, can you help us out? We want to deploy and we want to do that again. Uh, in a very rapid way, but also very quickly and very often. And the next uh, thing that they asked us was to uh, install and configure an application which was actually based on a Windows environment, which we hadn't done before. So we had to look into that. Uh, the request that we got is, can you help us deliver a system or build out an application that actually 
collects all the data for us. We want to have a single location for all the data. It's coming from different locations and all kinds of different formats. You can think of DB2, Oracle databases, MySQL, uh, Microsoft SQL, and even VSAM files on the mainframe uh, uh, were visible there. And we had to collect all these kind of uh, data into a single location. So there was a need for a data lake. We looked at the different set of applications that could do this, and one of the applications chosen by the business was an application called uh, Replicate, uh, built by Attunity, and they uh, delivered the application as a Windows uh, application, so that's why we needed to have a look at that. We now are able to uh, deploy the machines, so in our AWS accounts, we are able to configure the whole machine according to the, the requirements of the uh, security teams and compliance teams. We are able to install the uh, Attunity application, configure the application, set up the role-based access, and set everything up as being available for the customer. And the end result is that we have an application like this. So it is an actual, actual application that does replication from different kind of sources into our single data lake. And the customer themselves have some kind of build plan where they determine which pieces of data, which tables to copy, and where to put it in. Uh, at the moment, we are running over 60 uh, servers for this, uh, all completely automatically built and configured. And the great thing is that we incorporated a lot of the, our DevOps uh, teams in this, and the teams themselves are now able to make changes and provision the service on, based on their needs. And that's all built by Puppet. We already had uh, some agents installed on our, all our machines where we actually collect all the data, and now we have a machine that makes that visible, which was manually built and configured. So we were asked to help out in this way as well. So we actually uh, set up some code there where we can automatically configure the uh, Dynamics controller and set it up for end using monitoring. And this is also completely built in our Puppet code. Then when we did some testing afterwards, maybe it wasn't the right place, we had to do that before, but at the end we did some uh, testing on how compliant and secure our our, our, our machines. So our compliance scoring, if you use a default uh, setup of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux that we need to use, you get a report like this, which didn't make us very happy. So finally, we had a collaboration between the Unix teams, cloud team, and, uh, and our Puppet Core team to set up a Red Hat profile for compliance and, and making sure that all our systems are compliant so a lot of code were, time was uh, put in this to write the code, and it's now being applied. So that means that when we now run a default scan after the first uh, installation and configuration, it shows much better. So that concludes in why is automation critical for Agile? Well, we think it's uh, a great tool. Uh, sorry, uh, Puppet has been accepted as the infrastructure uh, management and automation tool of choice. So that took a lot of time, but we finally got there that we were able to use it, uh, which uh, gives us better speed. We are now able to deploy and manage our configuration very fast, and we have to spend less time on configuring and maintaining the state of our servers because it's in the central tool. So the complexity of our infrastructure uh, has been reduced by that uh, because of all the automation that we put in place. Also, Puppet is our single source of truth, so every th bit of configuration and uh, code is in one location. All the information from our infrastructure is located in one Puppet Enterprise Master Console, so we can view everything. And we got back our, uh, a lot of time because we didn't have to spend time on fixing things and we knew what exactly was going on and remediation has been taking place already. So we could back, uh, use that time to spend on new technology and invest in future uh, uh, yeah, features. That was kind of it. Thank you all. <laughs>